Well, we're officially stopping with chapter 10 in Larson. Since that's the last chapter in my old 1997 edition of Summer for the Gods and Since Times of Fleeting. But there are subsequent editions with additional material. And the 2020 edition includes an up to the minute afterward. I've heard it on, uh, in the audio version. It's uh, very good. If any of you are reading the 2020 edition, please post a comment on uh, the later chapters, especially on the afterward. They make very clear that the mentality that made Tennessee the likeliest venue for a Scopes trial in 1925 persists to this day. And the science-religion polarity, the notion that one cannot be religious and scientific, pious and an evolutionist, persists in many Tennesseans' minds. I hope I've been clear in communicating my view that that's an error. So here's some more or less accurately transcribed excerpts from the 2020 afterward. Uh, jumping in about halfway through it. Then as now, creationists and evolutionists found themselves talking past each other, as if in parallel universes, a condition more applicable to America's two major political parties as well, ever more applicable. Roughly 40% of adult Americans affirm that God created humans in their present form within the last 10,000 years, recent surveys find, or about twice the percentage of those accepting naturalistic evolution. Most of the rest believe in God-guided evolution. In Europe, where little overt promotion of something called creation science even occurs, belief in evolution is markedly higher than in the United States. With a creation-affirming promoter of private schools, of charter schools, serving as Secretary of Education in the Trump administration, and widespread Republican support for the policy of providing vouchers or tax credits for private and homeschooling, Creation science stands to reach an even wider audience in the future. Belief in creationism remains particularly strong in the South. These polls find especially in Tennessee. The, past, the latest Pew survey of religious belief in the U.S. listed Tennessee as the only state where over half the adult population identified with evangelical Protestantism. Anti-evolutionism remains a distinctly Southern issue. In 2005, Bryan College in Dayton, created in the aftermath of the Scopes trial, erected a larger-than-life statue of Bryan on the courthouse lawn. We saw it in 2018. The statue shows a youthful commoner. At the time, County Commissioner Tom Davis suggested that Darrow would not receive similar recognition. But Davis failed to appreciate the enduring passions energizing both sides of this historic clash. The Freedom from Religion Foundation, FFRF, raised funds for a competing statue of Darrow. Was it really competing? I would say it was complimentary a statue of Darrow, and in 2017 received the county's permission to install it despite local opposition. It portrays the agnostic icon with one hand tugging at his trademark suspenders and the other pointing at the Bryan statue. Davis welcomed the new statue. If I'm going to oppose a different belief, I'd better understand it. So had we all. We've got a video here of uh, the statue dedication in 2017. And Larson wraps up his 2020 afterward with this observation. The Scopes trial could have concluded only yesterday, or it might commence tomorrow. For everyone there and countless others, it still matters. And so I plan to teach it again in 2022.